Welcome to Stellify. Have you ever wondered about the deeper meaning behind everyday words? We use them without a second thought, but could there be hidden secrets lurking within the English language? Let's take a dive into the world of words and their potential hidden meanings. Consider the term work week. We all know it as the five days dedicated to our jobs, but have you ever noticed how when you break the words up, you have work and weak, as in losing energy. Is it merely a play on words, or could it be hinting at the exhaustion we feel at the end of a long week? And what about weekend? Doesn't it sound suspiciously like weakened? Is it possible that these terms have been designed to subconsciously reinforce a state of weakness or exhaustion? These are not isolated examples. Our language is peppered with such instances. The idea of language as a tool for subconscious control is not new. It's a concept explored in literature, film and academia. But what if it's not just a concept? What if our everyday language is a hypno-based code, designed and implemented by an unseen authority to cultivate seeds of perpetual servitude in our minds? Again, let's consider the term work. Pronounce it slowly were and then add the letter K. Doesn't were sound similar to war? And did you know that the letter K, which follows were, is the ancient Egyptian symbol for death? Is it possible that work is a cryptic combination of war and death? Every day we use words that could be hiding secret meanings, subliminally influencing our thoughts and behavior. Are these mere coincidences or could there be a more sinister design behind it all? Now, let's look deeper into these hidden secrets of the English language. What about the common phrases we use without a second thought? Consider control. It sounds like control, doesn't it? A con job designed for the trolls. Or in other words, a deceitful act intended to manipulate. It's almost as if our daily jobs are subtly suggesting that control is not about leadership or guidance but manipulation and deceit. It's a chilling thought, isn't it? Now let's look at the term school. It's where we learn, grow, and form our understanding of the world. But it also refers to a group that moves in perfect unison. Much like a school of fish, we're taught to think and react as a group, conforming to norms and standards set for us. The term graduation could be seen as a subtle nod to the gradual conditioning we undergo. What's the point of this exploration? It's not to alarm or discourage you. It's about awareness. It's about questioning and understanding the deep-rooted meanings and implications of the words we use daily. Could our language be subtly conditioning us for obedience and conformity? It's food for thought, isn't it? Our morning rituals may not be as innocent as they seem. Let's begin with the word morning. It's the start of our day, a fresh beginning, yet its phonetic twin, morning, is a term for grief or sorrow. Isn't it peculiar that we kick off our day with a word so closely associated with sadness and loss? Then we greet each other. Hello, we say, but have you ever considered what you're truly saying? Break it down and it becomes hell low. Now why would we want to incorporate hell, a place of torment and suffering into our everyday salutations? It's a chilling thought, isn't it? As our day continues, we strive to earn a living. But take a moment and think about the other meaning of earn. It's also an urn, a vessel for the ashes of the deceased. So. When we say we're earning a living, are we unintentionally referring to our own mortality? And what would be a morning without coffee? But contemplate this, the prefix cough is also found in coffin, a resting place for the dead. The word itself is of Egyptian origin, initially spelled as kafi or kafin, where ka means the spirit after death. Strikingly ominous for a beloved morning beverage, wouldn't you say? Now, 
Let's talk about our jobs. The term job may seem mundane, but it shares its name with a biblical character, Job, a man tormented by God, stripped of his health, wealth and children. Isn't it unsettling that our daily work is named after a man who faced such immense suffering? So we start our day with words tied to sorrow, hell, death and the afterlife, then head to a place named after a figure of suffering. It's quite a disturbing perspective on our daily routines, isn't it? So, are we unwittingly starting our day with words of sorrow and death? Now, let's explore the possible hidden meanings behind religious terms. We start with the word parish. It's a term we've all heard, usually referring to a specific community within a church. However, did you know that parish is pronounced the exact same way as perish, a word that means to die? Isn't it strange that a term we associate with community and worship shares such a close resemblance to a word that signifies the end of life? Moving on, let's examine the term church. This word, which we often associate with sanctuary and spiritual growth, has some intriguing roots. The word church originates from the Scottish word kirk, but the history doesn't stop there. Kirk comes from the Ro Roman word church. Now, here's where things get truly fascinating. Circ is derived from the Greek Mother Circe. And who was Mother Circe? She was a sorceress known for her devious ways. She would lure men into her home, transform them into pigs, and then eat them. Yes, you heard that right. The word that we now associate with a place of worship comes from a character known for deception and death. So, what does this all mean? Are we to believe that our places of worship are imbued with hidden messages of death and deception? Are we, like the men lured by Mother Circe, being led unknowingly to our own metaphorical demise. Now it's important to remember that language evolves and words can take on new meanings over time. But it's also worth considering that these connections may not be entirely coincidental. After all, language is a powerful tool and words carry more weight than we often give them credit for. Could our places of worship carry hidden messages of death and deception. As with many mysteries, the truth remains elusive. But one thing's for certain, exploring the hidden meanings behind the words we use every day can lead us down some truly unexpected paths. Now, let's revisit the key insights. We have journeyed through the maze of language, digging into the possible undisclosed meanings hidden in the English words and phrases we use daily. We began with our typical work week, where work could be associated with a gruelling war leading to fatigue and exhaustion. We plunged into our daily morning rituals, where words like morning and coffee could be linked with morning and death. Intriguingly, we dissected the word earn, as in earning a living, which shares an uncomfortable resemblance to urn, a vessel for ashes post-cremation. We ventured further with familiar terms like job, coincidentally sharing its title with a biblical character, tormented by God. We examined why we use a term linked with hardship to describe our sustenance. We also cast light on the disconcerting roots of religious terms. The word parish, representing a religious community, phonetically mirrors perish, a word synonymous with death. We delved into the history of church, tracing its origin to the Greek Mother Circe, a notorious sorceress. These hidden meanings could be pure coincidence, or they could imply a deeper clandestine layer within our language, subtly steering our thoughts and actions. But this video isn't aimed at providing definitive solutions, instead stimulating curiosity, urging you to question research and peek beyond the ordinary. Our language is a mighty tool and occasionally 
it enfolds secrets that are camouflaged in the open. So continue your exploration, keep challenging norms, and who knows, you may stumble upon some fascinating secrets concealed amidst the words we use every day. We hope you are enjoying our videos at Stellify. If you are, please take the time to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. It inspires us to make more content and we have so much more to discuss. So, do you see the potential that the English language has been hijacked to cast a dark spell on us? Well, they don't call it spelling for nothing, you know. We want to thank Jason Christoph, an expert in mind control, for the information used in this video. You can read the full article by clicking the link in the description. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below.